So welcome back, welcome back to YouTube channel and our Sunday morning talk. We're going through a series of choices, making right choices. We're looking at the book of Philippians and reading what Paul had to say and we're pulling out of that and we're talking about the choices that Paul is asking us to make. The way I wanna to start today, today is, is to think about this for a little bit, where life is happening right now. As you are watching this, life is taking place right now. And in this moment, a lot of things are taking place. There's things in your mind from the past. There's things in your mind that are coming in the future. There's things in your mind of all the things you have to get done today. Um, in, in right now, a lot is taking place. And I think it's really, really hard to enjoy the now of today. Do you get what I'm saying there? I think it's really hard to enter into this moment right now and enjoy this moment. Why? Because there's a lot of things from yesterday. There's a lot of things in tomorrow. And quite frankly, there's a lot of things going on right now, right? So it's just kind of hard to enter into now, relax and enjoy it, right? For some people, um, they're, they're, they tell us that they're stuck in yesterday. That means while they're living out today, they're thinking about, they're stuck in the hurts of yesterday. So that would be old wounds, maybe hurts, maybe betrayals from friends. So they're living out today, but their mind is stuck in yesterday. So it's hard for them to enjoy today right now. For some people, when they talk with us, they, they talk about um, tomorrow, their heads are stuck in tomorrow. So it's hard for them to enjoy right now because their minds are in tomorrow. And when they think about tomorrow, they think, oh my word, here are the challenges of tomorrow. These are all the things that could go wrong tomorrow. How do I plan? What do I do to make a difference tomorrow? And a lot of times when people have that focus in tomorrow, um, a lot of things come out of them like fear, anxiety, and stress because we've got to take care of tomorrow. And it's hard for someone who has their head stuck in tomorrow to enjoy right now. I just think it's a huge challenge to enjoy right now because there's just so much going on. And that's why what Sam said last week was so helpful. He shared with the scripture and he said, hey, listen, life's a journey, right? It's a journey and he, it's filled with the good and the bad and the ugly. Um, he said there's in our journey, there's sin, there's pain, there's adversity, wreckage and challenge. I know that's a list of bad things and there's also good things, but our life is a journey. And even as we jump into life and we're on the Jesus team, we're Christians and we do all the right things, at least we try to, life doesn't always turn out the way we want. Again, Sam reminded us, life is a journey. This is reality. Life is happening right now. It's a journey, and there's a lot of things involved with that. And so Sam turned right to Scripture, right from Philippians, and he shared what Paul said. Paul said, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. That's Philippians 3.16. In this journey of life, there's ups and downs. And Paul says, listen, we're going to press on, focus on the prize of heaven, focus on what matters, the eternal things. We don't look back and we don't allow this world and all the things of this world to distract us from the things that matter, eternal things, right? The one point uh, that Sam brought out, and as, as he was recording, I was, I was uh, listening, obviously, and, and this really impacted me. The one point he brought out was this world has one purpose. The one purpose of this world is to do anything, everything to take your focus off of what matters, eternal things, life and death, right? And of course, that makes sense because scripture comes out and says uh, that this world is controlled by the evil one. In 1 John 5, 19, the apostle John wrote, we know that we are children of God and the whole world is under the control of of the evil one. So it kind of makes sense that the whole purpose of this world is to distract us. So I want you to think about this for a second before we move on. Has the world right now that you live in, has the world taken your focus off of things that matter, off of eternal things, off of life and death things, off of heaven and hell? Has the junk of this world, the news and the politics and the division, 
taking your focus off eternal things. Of course, those things matter. We want you to engage those things properly. But the bigger question is, have they taken your focus off of things that matter, eternal things? So we're going to keep reading what Paul wrote in Philippians 4, um, and uh, we're going to just jump into it. Um, and remember, Paul just said, press on, right, and focus on things that matter. And then he keeps on writing, and he says, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Actually, that doesn't sound like a suggestion. It sounds like a command. Like he's just like a father talking to the kid, like, don't do this. Paul is coming out and saying, don't, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In your journey, remember Sam went to Philippians and said, hey, we're in a journey. In this journey that's filled with struggle, ups and downs, Paul says, don't be anxious about anything. How does that hit you? <laughs> I, I laugh a little bit because it hits me kind of awkwardly. Like, what do you mean, Paul? Like, don't be anxious about anything. I, I wish he could kind of fast forward to today and watch the news reports today and say, Paul, do you see what's on that TV? Of course you should be anxious, right? Um, when, you re when, when you hear me read that to you, uh, don't you think to yourself, well, thanks, Paul. Thanks for the help. You know, moms can't feed their kids today, and I don't know what's going to happen with my job. And the last time I went to the grocery store, it cost 200 bucks, and of course it's supposed to cost 50 bucks. Lord knows I don't even want to go to a gas station. Russia is marching through Ukraine. China wants to invade Taiwan, and I don't even really trust new news media outlets anymore. Yeah, Paul, because you said not to be anxious, I'm going to choose not to be anxious today. Oh, this is great. I, I don't know if you feel that or not, but parts of me is like, Paul, it's not that simple, right? Do, doesn't what Paul wrote, doesn't it sound naive to you? Like, don't be anxious. Everything's falling apart. Don't be anxious, right? Almost like a Christian bumper sticker, like don't be anxious, or a t-shirt, right? It sounds simple, doesn't it? So I want you to think about this real quickly. It sounds simple, sounds naive, but what if it was that simple? What if it was that simple? What if it wasn't complex? What if your life of struggle uh, and you're, you know, in this life of struggle, if your anxiety, um, what, what if his advice is that simple? What if we could make one choice and that one simple choice would absolutely change everything? I want you to think about this. It's really important to wrap your mind around just because in scripture, something sounds simple doesn't mean it lacks depth. Just because it sounds simple, just because it sounds easy, it doesn't mean it lacks depth. Paul said, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Could it be that simple. Most people today report that anxiety and stress and depression is growing. Some are stuck in yesterday. Mentally, they're stuck in yesterday and the hurts and the wounds and the betrayals of people, and it's hard to enjoy today. Some are stuck in tomorrow and the fear of like, I don't want to take on tomorrow. Some are just kind of frozen in today. I don't, I don't even want to engage the day. I'm frozen in today. And as we move through the day, we just can't enjoy it, can we? We just struggle. And how could we, right? Anxiety is ruining our mental health, we're told, right? We feel wave and wave of anxiety and depression, fear washing over us. What do we do? Well, it's really important to, I think, to look at scripture because uh, Paul makes it clear. He says, listen, this is what we do. We press on and we focus on things that matter. And when anxiety hits, because it will, you need to make a simple choice, right? Replace anxiety with prayer. Make a choice. You just replace anxiety with prayer. I want to read to you Philippians um, chapter 4, verse 7 from the message version. This is how it explains it in that version. Before you know it, this is prayer. Before you know it, 
a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. I just want to reach out to you this morning and ask you this question. When was the last time you made the simple choice to pray? When's the last time you made the simple choice to say, I'm going to take my focus off of me and the, 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 the stuff that's going on around me, and I'm going to place that focus on Jesus. I'm going to worship. I'm going to pray. I'm going to go to him. My focus is going to be on him. When's the last time you experienced Jesus displacing stress, worry, and fear from the center of your life? Like it's in there, and it's waves and waves, and, and you feel it, and you can't explain it necessarily, but you feel it, and you went to prayer, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it just goes away and you begin to feel the peace of God. When's the last time you experienced that? Please hear me tell you, just because it's simple doesn't mean it lacks depth. Big question here to think through is this. As a disciple of Christ, someone who says, I wanna follow Jesus, he's my Lord and my Savior, as you live out today, is prayer the first thing you go to? is prayer the first thing you go to. Remember, life's a journey. It's filled with ups and downs. Even if you're on the Jesus team and you're a Christian and you're trying to do all the right things, like there's good, the bad, and the ugly, and you're gonna go through life, and Paul says, uh, when you feel anxiety, because you will, like, is, is prayer the first thing you go to? Some do. I, I know Christians, the first thing they go to, it's wonderful, but most don't. Some do, most don't. Don't you find that we tend to do everything but pray? Seriously, we just kind of do everything but pray. We don't, it's not really a necessary category that we fall into sometimes. You know, life's a journey, it's stressful, things pop up. And sometimes it's the last thing we do, right? Doesn't our anxiety swirl in our hearts and minds? Isn't prayer sometimes the last thing that we think of? It, like it has to get really, really bad and, and then we pray. Um, what do we tend to do instead of praying? Well, I'm in this world with you and, and just some of the things I've tried in the past. And, and I'm like, and then I remember because it gets bad. Oh, I, I need to pray. And you probably relate. Um, we try to handle things ourselves, don't we? Th things pop up in the family, in the business, um, health issues, financial, like things pop up. And we think, well, I have to be tough. I have to figure it out on my resources and who I know and what I can do with my human energy. And I've got to muscle through this day on my strength. I got to toughen up, right? I think sometimes we try to think it through. We think, well, if I have more information, if I can read about it and understand anxiety, then my anxiety will go away. I think sometimes we try to avoid it. We, some people literally just ignore anxiety, like they ignore the reality of life and they think, well, if I ignore the bad situation, it'll go away, All right? Normally that just makes it worth. Sometimes people talk and they talk endlessly because they have labeled themselves, I'm a verbal processor. And they, so they verbally process, which means when they meet you, it's blah, 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 blah. And they, they think the more they talk, the better it's going to make them feel. It's going to make their anxiety go away. And many times uh, nowadays, we're just plugged in. We are plugged into social media. We're plugged into news channels. And we spend hours having other people's thoughts and opinions assaulting our brains, right? What happens when we try to take on the worry and the stress of life on this journey, what happens when we try to do it ourselves, when we try to muscle through on our own human strength? Well, anxiety isn't replaced with prayer. Anxiety is still there. It might go up and down a little bit, but it's never replaced. Anxiety isn't replaced with prayer. In fact, anxiety has the space now to grow and grow, right? And over time, it wears us out right? We feel defeated and we can be all over the map emotionally, right? What if we ever got to the point and understood our human effort, our human strength, this way of muscling through life on our own strength is absolutely useless? What if we actually needed a spiritual touch from God? What if we have no ability on our human strength to get the things done or to deal with this, right? I'm gonna to go to Psalms. There's two scriptures I wanna share with you. Um, I hope you remember these scriptures. Uh, the first one is Psalms 108, verse 12 to 13. The second is Psalms 127, verse one. 
I love these scriptures. David wrote them. They're awesome. It says, give us aid against the enemy for human help is worthless. Have you ever thought that your stress and your worry and anxiety is your enemy? Give us aid against the enemy for human help is worthless. With God, we gain the victory and he will trample down our enemies. Have you ever thought of that? You're going through life, you're muscling through life, and it's wearing you down, and you think, what? I've got to do it. No, turn to Scripture, and it tells us, no, your human effort, your energy is useless. Turn to God and let Him defeat your energies. Verse 127, verse, uh, chapter 127, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. Please hear me tell you something that I hope deeply impacts you and changes your life forever. Please hear me when I tell you prayer is a choice. You need God. The stuff you're up against, the stuff you're up against is bigger and badder than you can handle. You need God. Prayer is a choice. Prayer is entering into the reality of now. It's, it's, it's the re entering into the reality of my journey is a mess. I'm not, I'm not going to look back. Of course, we want you to be real about your emotions and forgive and deal with that stuff. I'm not going to look to the future and get distracted. Of course, we want you to plan and be wise. But I'm not going to allow those things to distract me. The prayer is entering into now. Prayer is entering into the mess of the journey today. Prayer is entering into your actual anxiety today. It's connecting with God and experiencing God's in control. I'm going to enter into now. I'm going to enter into the reality of my life. It's a mess. I don't like it. And I need to enter into the reality that God's in control. I can't do anything. It's the process of saying, anxiety, you're not going to rule over me. You're there, and I'm going to move you out because I want prayer to be there. It's a choice. It's a choice that says, I want to experience God coming and displacing anxiety and worry and dread from the center of my soul, that's prayer. It's real. It, it, it doesn't matter how long you pray, how short you pray. It doesn't matter the words you use. Oh, my word. It's just the reality of entering into now. Let me ask you something. Do you remember what when Jesus was on earth, on earth? Do you remember what Jesus said about worry, doubt, and fear, and that way of living? I'm going to read something for you that... Um, Again, it should just radically change your life. He said this, he said, Jesus said, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life. I love that. Can any one of you, by worrying, and uh, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of, of, you, you of little faith? So do not worry about saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I love in verse 27, Jesus asks the question, it just, again, brings us into reality, brings us into now. Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? L listen, let, let's ask these questions. Based on your human energy, your human effort, your human strength, can you add one more hour to your life? No. No. Based on your human energy, your human strength, and your human abilities, can you defeat anxiety and worry forever? No. Through, through uh, the worry and anxiety, can you change anything? Like you're going to sit in your home and you're going to allow worry and stress and fear to grow and grow and grow. And you get really, really tense and you're really, really angry and you're really, really depressed. Can you make any difference of any kind? 
No, right? Only God can come in and displace worry, stress, and fear, and dread from the center of your soul. I want to wrap this up, um, and I want to make a few comments, and then on Sunday mornings, what we're going to, on this coming Sunday morning, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to walk into our second worship set, and we're going to have a time of prayer, and we're just going to give everyone time and space to enter into prayer and worship and allow God to just displace worry, stress, and fear from the center of our lives. So what I want to do here in this video is I want to close and I want to, sh um, but first I want to share a couple things. Um, first thing I want to say is life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. And there just has to be a day in your life when you decide, I need a spiritual solution. L li listen, life is spiritual. And there has to be a day in your life when you decide, I need a spiritual solution because my life is spiritual. You, you can't do this without God. You, you can't do this without God, right? That means, um, that's, that I, that's what, I apologize for stuttering. That's what it means to be a Christian, to come to the point and realize, I can't do this on my human strength. I can't muscle through anymore. I, I'm, I, I come up short. That's the whole point of Paul's message, the whole point of the good news. Galatians and Ephesians, I, we're come up short kind of people. We realize um, life is spiritual and I need a spiritual solution. Me doing it and muscling it on my own is tearing me apart, right? It, it's, it's the core of what it means to be a Christian. When I get to the point and saying, I'm going to stop muscling through life without God, and I'm going to turn to him for his strength. Listen, you will face anxiety. We all do. It's not unique to you. That's everyone. Scripture teaches the first thing we do is we make a simple choice and we pray. And we pray and we pray. Pray, uh, we, we, when we pray, we invite God to displace worry from the center of our souls. And remember, Jesus taught our worry, our stress, it accomplishes nothing. What are you going to do? Are you going to hold on to it? Well, the promises of Scripture are that when you turn and pray, God can come in and displace it from the center of who you are. I didn't say the problems go away. I said you can have the peace of God as you walk forward in life. Second thing I want to say is life is spiritual. Life is very spiritual. And with God's strength, we're expected to have that strength and then engage the day. The reason I added this is um, I think sometimes people hear us say things like, well, um, don't be anxious about anything and, and pray. And, and, and people think, well, then all my problems go away. So I'm going to stay at home, not pay my bills, not love my wife. I'm just going to let God do everything because scripture says, don't worry. I'm just going to, you know, close windows, binge Netflix, drink wine and wonder, you know, why things are falling apart because scripture says, don't worry about anything. No, that, that's not what it implies. It, it implies praying, praying and allowing God to displace worry from this Sunday of your life. And when you have that, then you go engage life, right? You work hard, you make wise choices, you love your wife, you engage life, you face fear. And that's when God gives you his strength and you have to gauge life and you will face fear. That's why it takes faith to overcome fear, right? It's not a permission slip to be lazy, sinful, or irresponsible. God's given you his strength to engage the world. We call it faith, right? So life is spiritual and you need a spiritual solution. Life is spiritual. You need God's strength to engage today. Scripture says something beautiful when Paul writes Timothy a letter. It's in uh, 1 Timothy 1.7. God's spirit doesn't make cowards out of us. God's spirit doesn't make cowards out of us. The spirit gives us power, love, and self-control. Yeah, life is spiritual. And whenever you feel God displace uh, anxiety and, and fear from the center of your life, um, yeah, we're supposed to take that and we're supposed to engage the world, we're supposed to do something. It's called faith, right? Last thing I want to say, life is spiritual. Life is absolutely spiritual, which means we're absolutely dependent on God. I believe one of the biggest issues we're facing as the larger church in North America is that we are, it, the churches in North America, we're trying to solve problems that only God can solve. We're trying to solve problems on our strength our knowledge and we're trying to muscle through this culture and we're trying to figure out well what can we do 
to make a difference. And there's a part for doing things well, but I want to tell you the bigger, the bigger reality. We need God. The things we're up against today, they're God problems. They're God problems, and we need God. I think we need churches across North America praying and fasting and saying, God, please come and please fix these problems because we're tapped out. So a couple questions that I have for you before we close out. What do you think about? What do you think about? What do you, what do you worry about? What stresses you out? Are you um, frozen in, in today? Like you, you don't even want to get out of bed, just frozen and you feel stuck, right? Um, what, what is your mental health like? What, what's that look like? Um, are you stuck um, in yesterday from the hurts and the wounds and the betrayals of people? Or is your mind so stuck in that it's hard for you to enjoy today? Um, are you feeling just waves and waves of fear and anxiety because you look at the future and how you have to fix it and all the things go wrong? Where are you? Where's your head? What, what are you thinking about? Are you stuck in fear of facing tomorrow? Last question, would you like God to enter your life right now and displace worry from the center of your life? You can. Paul said, make a simple choice, pray. Because when you pray, that replaces anxiety. Oh my word, we love you. We hope you have a great week. If you want more information or if you want us to um, you know, engage you in any way, please reach out to us, talk to us. We love you. And our challenge to you today is prayer. Uh, pray. We'll see you next week.